guys, I'm back, part two. I think it's gonna be a part three, okay? So now let me give you the, the video of the economic conditions of the country right now, okay? And this is from the, uh, I think the guy's channel is called the um, Silver Report. So I wanna give credit to the Silver Report. This is his work, not my work. So let's be sure that we respect his rights and I'm only using this to share information, no other gain, no monetary gain. This is just to open your eyes, okay? So here we go. 14. Now it's an anomaly. The only reason that it can actually exist is because this whole expansion, it was fake. You see the Federal Reserve, they did some experimenting with their quantitative easing during the Great Recession. The collapse that should have been, it was kicked down the road a little bit. And because everything was artificially propped up and interest rates were kept at 0%, pretty much indefinitely, it really worked to hide the greater problem. All of those problems have been mounting for a long time. And we tracked the store closures pretty closely. We tracked the mass layoffs pretty closely. And they were really accelerating. 2019 was a horrible year for many businesses, for many retail chains. The writing has been on the wall. And, and I think, and guys, I think this is important what he's saying. I don't mean to overtalk him, but in 2019, before coronavirus, this stuff was happening. Don't let them fool you into thinking this is about the coronavirus. This was going on long before. The size of their balance sheet, and it wasn't that long at all. They also began to raise interest rates, not very high either. In a short time after doing this, the entire economy began to crumble to pieces. This is nothing that should be described the greatest economy ever. And so that's why I don't believe this V-shaped recovery. Now, before all this came along, Trump's biggest complaint about the Fed was that they weren't dropping interest rates fast enough. They began to drop interest rates towards 0% once again, 0.25 at a time. And this was not fast enough. He was saying we need to be at 0% interest rates. We need to make sure the dollar, it drops in value and a lot of his frustrations were just focused around the fact that interest rates, they were too high. I mean, but they really weren't that high. In a great economy, they would need to raise interest rate. What we were actually witnessing was a giant Federal Reserve-induced bubble. Stock market crash that should have gone all of the way in what they were labeling the Great Depression too at the time. It was pumped back up by the Federal Reserve. The unemployment data is ridiculous, the way they calculated it. The big change since the Great Recession, the way they were able to lower the unemployment rate, it was by removing people from the pool of workers that they are counting. It removed millions of workers. We had a horrible workforce participation rate. There's no way they could honestly say that we had the lowest unemployment in history. It simply wasn't true. It's accounting gimmicks. And that's now, why he should be held for truth. Because that was the good news. Talking about Trump. To this. There was a survey that was conducted by a company called Aslo. They found 50% of small business owners, they believe they're going to have to close their business for good. Actually, it was 47% of small business owners that were surveyed. They said they anticipate shutting down permanently. 41%. They said that they are looking for full-time work elsewhere. So not only do they anticipate that they're going to be closing their business for good, they are actively looking for a full-time job. Now, a lot of small businesses have already been shut down. Another interesting fact, 38% involved in the survey, they applied for these Paycheck Protection Program loans. Of those who did apply, 37% said the program was slow to distribute funds, 20% described the process as painful, the company reported. Small businesses in America, they employ 58.9 million Americans, and the majority of the workforce are in the smaller, like the real small businesses. Unlike a lot of the public companies who got a part of the Paycheck Protection Program loans, that's 47.5% of the country's total employee workforce. If half of small businesses in the United States expect to close their business permanently. I mean, we're just going to need to start getting honest here. We're going to need to start getting honest and admitting it's a hard road ahead.
We're going to have to pull ourselves out of this. It's going to be difficult. Many of us are going to have to tighten our belt. You know what? Sherry purchases at U.S. corporations, maybe they need to slow down a little bit, and we need to focus a little bit less on what the stock market is doing. Because if people don't have jobs, it doesn't matter what share prices rise to. We need to focus on the real economy. Honestly, looking at this data, it seems more like we need to focus on self-sustainability, on small communities, farmers' markets, making sure you're visiting the small businesses in your town. But like I've said many times, it's my belief that this is on purpose and this is the end of our nation. All they needed this entire time was to get us to a stage where we are unmanageable as a people. And we see by the recent events that's already become a reality. You know, an interesting realization came to me the other day, and it really doesn't matter in this world what is true or what is false. What matters is the perception of the majority, and whoever controls the media controls the majority. It's actually so powerful that whoever controls the majority also has control over history, things that have already happened. And some of the media in this country are the most dishonest people. What we have is not people who are reporting what's happening in our world. They're not reporting the story. They are those who are creating the story. We have fallen into the hands of a very dangerous group of people. So I wanted to bring up the Atlanta Fed GDP now. We've been covering recently how they were projecting that the GDP in the U.S. for quarter two would decline by 40%. Many other banks have been coming out recently, getting rid of their V-shaped recovery narratives and also downgrading their GDP expectations. So what happened now is truly shocking. So the St. Louis Fed, their president, Ballard, he predicted the unemployment could soar to 30% and that the GDP could collapse by 50%. This, of course, would dwarf anything we've seen during the Great Depression and would make it the worst economic collapse in history. So it's no surprise the Atlanta Fed came out and their GDP now tracker confirmed what is the worst case scenario. That is so far. It could get much worse than this. As we've seen, it's been deteriorating very rapidly. So the latest model estimate for the real GDP growth in the second quarter It crashed to negative 51.2% on May 29th. Now, that was just negative 40.4% on May 28th, which is the largest drop in history. So, of course, the question should be asked, how did the U.S. GDP drop 10% in one day? So, the Fed said, after this morning's advanced economic indicators report from the U.S. Census Bureau and personal income and outlays release from the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, the now cast of the second quarter real personal consumption expenditures growth decreased 56.5%, and the now cast contribution of change in real net exports to second quarter real GDP growth, it declined from 2.07% to 0.73 percentage points, unquote. Now, what's interesting is there are those that are still predicting that quarter three is going to be transitory to a rocking quarter four. Larry Kudlow went as far as to say that the U.S. could have record GDP growth in the third quarter. Now, of course, if quarter two GDP collapses negative 50 percent, I mean, anything at that point would end up being record GDP growth. If we recover by 6%, it would be the highest growth in GDP in a long time, seeing how typically we've been running around 2% growth for years. So it's important to keep it in perspective when this man speaks. Now, of course, I was expecting a collapse. I was expecting a recession, but nothing at all on this scale. Now, I also wanted to bring up the Chicago PMI. Because the Chicago PMI, it has plummeted to the lowest level going back to 2009. It was much lower than expectations. There was expectations that we would see a bounce to 40. A number of 50 denotes expansion, but it was at 35.4. The horrible news, the Chicago PMI, 
it fell even further to 32.3 in May. Now, one of the biggest contributors to the decline, new orders, they fell at a very rapid pace. Employment, it fell. Production, it also began to fall at a much faster pace. Of course, along with new orders, we also see order backlogs. They fell at a much faster pace. So the collapse has accelerated into May. All right, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As all guys, and as you can hear and as you heard, I mean, this stuff is real, real serious. There are going to be people, some of you guys are going to end up in food lines. You know, some of you guys are going to end up, unfortunately, homeless. A lot of you guys are going to end up in the FEMA camp. So we've talked about that before because you didn't prepare. You know, you were warned. We told you. You know, we told you guys, save your money. You know, a lot of you guys have got that $1,200 stimulus. How you, you know, how is that money working for you about right now? I suspect a lot of you don't even have it anymore. And a lot of you guys, you know, who are working for the smaller businesses, as you just heard, almost 50% of those people are not coming back. As a matter of fact, the owners of those businesses got to go get a job just so they can keep eating. So what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? And if you didn't prepare, you took the, that. I mean, obviously $1,200 was not going to change your life. I get that. But $1,200, could have you could have taken that and bought food and resources and different things that at least could have given you an opportunity to sustain yourself until maybe you could come up with another program or come up with something. Some of you guys could have pulled those resources. Some of you families could have gotten together instead of well, eight or nine of you guys or five or six of you guys, instead of dealing with, with $1,200, $1, you could have been dealing with $5,000, $7,000, $8,000 of goods and resources. You think how that would have put you in a better position you know, for this economic storm that's coming. But you didn't do it. You didn't listen. At least I suspect you didn't. Maybe you did. I hope you did. Because if you did not, what I'm going to say to you guys is pro not only, it's, this is a, not only prophetic, I'm telling you that you're going to see this happen. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about 20 years from now, 10 years. I'm talking about you're going to see this happen before this year is out. Some of you guys are going to see this happen in the next two or three months. You're going to be in a situation that you're going to be getting tossed out into the streets. A lot of you guys are going to be in food lines, begging lines. And you heard what, you know, Esau said. I watched the video yesterday. Esau, a mainstream media news, which is a lie in terms of exaggerating the truth and creating their own news. All right. But I heard him interviewing some, some, some white families. And I heard one of those guys said, you know, when they started riding, you know, they were, you know, burning down buildings and they were you know, breaking windows, and they were trying to enter in our houses. And I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. Here it goes. Here is the turn. Here is that Here is that turn that, that I've been telling you that was coming. Remember that video not long ago where I told you about the people were purchasing guns, and they said they were buying these guns to protect their families. It was all women, Esau women, white women, and men. Now you got a white man saying that, that they were trying to come in their homes. He dog whistled to everyone else. Get ready, because when you start to see these so-called Negroes running out in the streets and doing some of the things that you see doing, be prepared to shoot them down, shoot to kill. Just like President Trump said, you know, when the loot starts, the shooting starts. He dog whistled them, and now they're repeating his, his, his message for all to hear. But, and, and who would really better hear, you think they're shooting you down now and putting their knees and choking you out, you know, now. You find them breaking in your homes and accusing you of false crimes and shooting your women, you know, in, while they're in bed, unclothed. You think that's bad. You, what's coming, guys, next is going to be something that, that, that you could have never, ever imagined if you're not prepared. And I told you guys about getting, you know, arms and food. You need to have food first. If you got food, then your arms will be to defend what you have. But if you didn't buy food, you're going you're gonna to have to use your arms to try to get food. And these people are already armed to the teeth. And they're ready for you. They are ready, and they are gone to shoot the kill. They're going to shoot the kill even if you don't come. They're going to come. You're going to see death squads going through community. Remember the Purge movie? That is an art imitating life, and it's going to be coming in your neighborhoods, in these communities where you are right now, because they're not going to let you come to their community. They're going to meet you in your communities, and they're going to use the police, the, the National Guard, the military, and any other means that they can use, guys including health and human services to come in and target you to say that you got coronavirus, you're asymptomatic, so you need to be taken away and locked away so that they can deal with you behind the curtain when nobody sees what they're doing. This is your final warning on this subject. 
hope you are prepared. If you're not, good luck. Bye now.